Hi, Peter Charles here, Folks for Life, Fly Fishing. And today we're going to do a uh, peeping caddis. Uh, it's an interesting um, pattern that imitates case caddis uh, that usually build their cases out of uh, sticks or uh, grains of sand or something of that nature. And what's interesting about that, and we don't think of this, is they can move around quite well with their case. Uh, they're not stuck to the bottom as we might think. They are actually can be quite mobile. Uh, so let's get going on looking at the case caddis and the materials we're going to use. So my hook is going to be this Dohiko Type J in a size 8. This is a big fly. We're going to be using a, a 3.8 millimeter uh, tungsten slotted bead. We're going to use this Vivas 10 uh in the dark brown. Uh, the head of the caddis is going to be this uh, uh, fluorescent uh, chartreuse yarn. You could also use uh, floss as well. The original pattern calls for floss. I just don't happen to have any, but yarn works just as well, as long as it's like a hot chartreuse. The legs of the caddis are going to be uh, partridge. Now, when it comes to the body, let's talk about the body. Uh, the original pattern calls for this Wapsi uh, pine squirrel mix, which I've never seen or heard of before. Uh, so we're going to use something. We're going to use hare's ear. Now, uh, and we're going to add in a couple of other colors. Now, the thing to keep in mind when it comes to case caddis is it depends on your local uh, river that they, they're making their caddis of whatever material there is that you can find on the bottom that's suitable. So you're going to get some color variation from one river to the next depending on what's available for the caddis to use. So the fact that we're not using exactly the right material, uh, what you do, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to model mine by putting a little bit of um, mixture of the uh, this uh, rabbit, and uh, that way I give it that kind of a model appearance that I see when I turn over rocks in our local river. So let's get started. Now, uh, before we get going, you'll notice this uh, hook and uh, a bead looks a little ragged just because it's recycled. I tied a fly, didn't like it, cut it off. At the price of these hooks and that, I do recycle them. Okay, we just tie on our piece of yarn here. And this uh, pattern calls to have a little bit of a black head. And what I've done is I've just tied on the yarn, so it's going to make this easy to make the, the black head. And then I just cut it off right there. And now I've got that little black head on my uh, yarn and I'm good to go. Now as far as the uh, partridge is concerned, I'm going to strip one side of this. This is not heavily hackled. So um, you don't get gung-ho with this. Let's move your thread out of the way. Make sure you don't catch the, the head of this. You want to leave the head of the caddis peeking out so it can be seen. There we go. Sometimes you'll break these off and sometimes it won't break off. There we go. Now I'll just, uh, I can just pull that back a little bit. Pull barbs back of the uh, partridge and wind them down so they flow backwards. There we go. Perfect. Now I'm going to mix my uh, dubbing here and I'm going to be selecting from, I've got some dark hairs here, here as well, and I'm going to throw in a bit of tan and I might even toss in a little tiny bit of yellow just to give it a bit of uh, some of those yellowy uh, grains of sand. So let's get going with that. And this is going to be a really thick body because the we've got to have some chunkiness to this. Have you ever looked at caddis, uh, case caddis, you ever turned over rocks, you see how thick those ca cases can be, especially uh, late in the season, uh, I should say late in the spring. 
I just gotta put just a little pinch of yellow. If some of those colors get cov covered up a little bit, just put a little bit more in. I'm mixing a little bit of tan with the yellow. And blend these all together. Now I'm going to the last bit. I'm just going to make a very thin dubbing uh, rope and crisscross it just to give it a a little bit of speckling there instead of that yellow looking like a stripe it's sort of speckled maybe i'll do a little bit more i'll do a little bit of dark chocolate again very thin dubbing rope and crisscross it there you go that's what we're looking for and i'll just get some of those loose bits and maybe a little bit more of the front there. There we go. Now we can whip finish. And if you think it's a little bit too spiky, you can come in and give it a bit of a haircut. There we go. And you see that has that kind of mottled appearance that you would expect to see from a caddis that's collected bits off the bottom. So it ends up being all sorts of different speckly colors. Uh, it's just that little bit of hint of yellow in there, some darker and some lighter colors. So it looks like it's collected stuff off the bottom. Um, you don't have to do that. You can make it all one color. But I, I found when I looked at my local river, the, the cases tend to be uh, different colors and, uh, you know, they can got the speckled look to them. So that's what I'm after as best as you can get out of dubbing. So there we go, the uh, peeping caddis. Pretty simple pattern. And I think it'd be quite effective. And as I say, don't be surprised. These things can move around with those cases. We think them stuck to the bottom, but they actually can move. And they can actually swim if the currents are not too strong. So give it a try, the peeping caddis. Cheers.